Hi, I'm Naomi. I'm from Girl Scouts of Greater Los Angeles in Southern California. Knowing how to create and stick to a budget is a skill you'll need throughout your life. Before you can think about a budget, you need to figure out where you want to live. Today you will learn about the cost of housing and imagine what your future life might be like as you earn your ambassador on my own badge. Please plan for about 60 minutes to complete this activity. You'll need paper, pens or pencils, and a computer or a tablet or a smartphone to do internet research. So let's get started. So when you're living on your own, whether that be in a house or renting an apartment or a condo, the biggest thing will be a budget and living within those expenses and other rules and regulations your housing unit may have. Look at a map of an area you'd like to live, whether it be your freshman dorm in college or a neighborhood you'd like to live in in the future. When doing this activity, it's important to keep in mind that if you're planning on living in a big city or a big college, it might be more expensive to rent or live there. Think about how much money you might need to set aside for renting or buying an apartment or a house. Next, create a chart on a piece of paper with columns that will help capture the living options available in your desired area. Make sure you include a column for location, type of housing, size of housing, amenities, cost to rent for per month, and cost to own with monthly mortgage payments. Then make sure you have enough rows for six listings. As you go through the listings, jot down the six listings that appeal the most to you. Now you can begin your research. Take a look at six different kinds of apartments, houses, or dorms, and figure out what kind of compromises you may need to live there and what differs in each. From the search field of your internet or your browser, you wanna type in a location and figure out what kind of apartments or what kind of other kinds of housing units might be available there. Real estate listings will then be able to populate. So you wanna make sure you filter your search by doing keywords on what you're looking for in your housing unit. This may be a garage or an outdoor patio space or maybe even a pool. But by doing this, you can narrow down your search field. If you have time, you may want to make multiple charts that compare different listings at different prices and locations. So what did you discover in your research? How do all the listings compare? What trade-offs would you have been willing to reconsider? What things are non-negotiable? You can take this activity a step further by doing it with a group of friends. Have each friend pick a different city or a neighborhood to research and at the end, share what you found out based on that cost, location, and preference. Here are a few terms that'll help you along the way. Down payment. When you buy a home, the financial institution lending you the money for the purchase will typically require a percentage of the purchase price to be paid in cash as a down payment. This is normally about 20%. First and last month's rent. So if you're renting, your landlord will often require you to pay first and last month's rent as an insurance for them to make sure you will do pay the lease upfront. Being paid for last month's rent at the beginning of the lease is insurance for the landlord in case the renter fails to pay regularly or moves before the lease expires. Security deposit. So many landlords require you to pay an upfront security deposit in case anything is broken, stolen, or anything that could keep the apartment in bad shape. So the money paid for a security deposit is normally paid back to you at the end of the lease. And in some cases, the last month's rent, as mentioned above, is used as a security deposit. A mortgage fee. So whether a bank or another financial institution lends you the money to purchase a house or a condo, a monthly fee or a mortgage fee is required to pay back both the principal, the amount borrowed, and your interest on the loan. Share your research with your family and friends and get their thoughts. After you've spent some time researching where you'll live, it's a good idea to think about what you've learned and what you might want to do next. You can do this by asking yourself these four questions. What were you most surprised to learn? What sources did you turn to? What places would you no longer consider? And which places may you consider further? Congratulations, you've successfully completed one of the steps in earning your ambassador on my own badge. You now have a better understanding of things to consider when planning and buying an apartment or a house. It's important to understand the budget that you have available and how it impacts your decision. Thank you so much for checking out the plan for where you lived activity. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with another scout, explore other fan activities on our Girls at Home website, reach out to your local Girl Scout council or share it with your troop leader. And if you're not a Girl Scout, please join us. You can learn more at girlscouts.org.
Thanks for watching.